So I think the Hidden Place, like in what, what it's doing at the moment, is camp. It's like a fun week where they get to just be kids and not worry about stuff. That's what I love about it so much, is they're getting away from like real life issues. Like, because most of our kids don't get to be kids at home. So when they come here, they don't have to worry about like what they're gonna eat for the week or where they're gonna sleep for the week or if someone's gonna be home taking care of them for the week. Like they get to forget about all that stuff and just focus on like building relationships with, with the people in their group and with um, like the leaders that are here, but like most importantly, like doing that with God and getting to know him for the first time and getting to experience all this cool stuff and new stuff for the first time. So. Um, it's still like the same thing as an American camp in a lot of ways, but it's, it's different because it's different kids. So there's a lot of people involved that never really see camp happen, um, but then there's the team that comes. Um, and then on the South African side, um, we have at the moment a leadership base of probably about 15 to 18 people. Um, who some of them are young adults who've been on camp before and now they're involved in leadership. Um, some of them are friends of mine who come and lead worship or help with games. Um, and then Promise and Melissa, Promise is Melissa's mom, and they've been here since the very first camp and they do all of the teaching and um, like evangelism based stuff. Um, and Promise and, and Mel are from South Africa, so they grew up here and um, they're just this cultural and spiritual base for us that, that we might not really understand because we're coming from an American point of view or even a white South African point of view and, and Promise and Mel really get it. Um, they can obviously communicate with the kids um, in their language and then understand culturally different things that I don't always get. And um, yeah, they're such a huge part of what we do. I mean, I, I don't even know what camp would look like if it wasn't for them. I met Courtney at church, EBC. We had outreaches into the informal settlement then a church where we would go into informal settlement and play with the kids and I don't know how she heard about me but I heard that she was looking for someone to help with camp. Now I hate camps but when I heard that it was, this was the kids camp and we we're going to talk about Jesus and I could play a role in that I thought this is awesome and Mel also my daughter uh, I discussed it with her and she was like, wow, this is like in line with our vision of reaching children because everyone was busy evangelizing the adults and no one was preaching to the kids and we had seen in the informal settlements that they are ready to hear the gospel and the full gospel and not watered down or anything like that. They can comprehend a, a savior dying for them on the cross and accept him and live for him. So we're excited that someone has come up with a camp, not just a few hours in a Saturday, you know. And so I believe firmly that all the kids that come to our camp are, are kids that God has chosen for that camp. And for that, whatever theme we're having, that kid really needed to hear that. Our kids come from Alex and that's, that's what we call an informal settlement, squatter camp, really. Uh, that means it's, there's no formal structure there. They just put together stuff, you know, corrugated iron and boxes and plastics. And so it's not a, a proper structure of a building. The background from the informal segment, kids, is there's filth everywhere and there's abuse of substances by their adults in the community. So they drink because there's poverty and people tend to to all sorts of stuff to cope with life in that, in that fashion. And, and kids are brought up in that, and there's AIDS, so there's a whole lot, a whole lot of orphans as well, child-headed homes. And in the townships, it's the same thing. Although there's less filth there, there's proper streets and running water and stuff, uh, which you don't find in an informal settlement. But the common thing is, is poverty. Um, there's a high rate of unemployment here in South Africa, which impacts family life. And yeah, the kids have to fend for themselves most of the time and, and try to do odd jobs or some of them, the most horrid things they can think of. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's where they come from. No care, some no adult supervision, and hence some of them battle a lot with authority because they are the authority they get home and they are angry with life and they don't have most of the stuff other kids would have, you know, a warm bath, a loving mother or a father and 
Yeah, so the, the family structure is, is not normal. There's a whole lot of dysfunctionality there. Um, and so when they come to camp, it's nice to see that they get to see adults that have Christ in them, how an adult is supposed to act and what someone with Christ looks like and what is life like, you know, what's a different version, what's a different way of doing life, in other words. I think my daughter put it in, in such a simple way that I will follow what she said. She said, just walk in love. You know, it's that simple to lead. Um, love will teach you how to relate to the kids. And we always use more than just the verbal language to communicate anyway. There's, um, you can sign and there's a local leader who will help you if you can't communicate with the kids. And when, the one amazing thing about kids is that play is a language in itself. As you play games with the kids, you are saying volumes, non-verbally, even if you just say hop here, you know, the fun you're having with the kid at that time, will, they probably will remember that more than what you will say verbally anyway, what they did with you, you know, the games that we have at camp. And, you know, we're not, as Christians, we're not called to a comfortable life. When Christ said, go ye to the world, he knew that we would encounter different cultures, different languages. And he said, I go with you. And so if you believe that you are really a child of God and that God lives within you, Christ is in your heart, that's all you need really to volunteer. You don't need to know much to know Christ and you know that he wants to reach the children. That's all the experience you need, you know. Um, and so I would challenge people who are really have a heart to see the gospel spread all over the world and to make it different in a child's life. That is like investing in, in, in generations to come, you know, and the choices they will make will forever be impacted by that camp. They will, the person they marry, the person they become, the kind of work they do. And just you coming over impacts so many generations already. I think it's worth the, the discomfort. It is like a lot of work, but it's worth it when you look at it through the lens of eternity. I mean, it's worth it, it's really worth it. And, and so it doesn't need an experienced person in any way. All you gotta do is love Christ and love people, and then you can do it.